Integrating Multiple Literacies Across the Curriculum by Helen Ball. As a teacher, you may have heard some buzz recently about incorporating literacy into all areas of the Alberta curriculum, and you may have also been encouraged to do so by a mentor or an administrator. This dialogue may have left you with some questions like, what exactly is literacy? I don't teach language arts. Why should I be encouraging literacy in my classroom? And how can I incorporate literacy into my subject area? Please follow along with this video for my insights and advice. Let's start by defining the term literacy. You may think about this in terms of the ability to read and write, which is part of the picture. Nowadays, the definition of literacy is expanding. Balanoff and Chambers encourage us to see literate people as those who can read their world, make meaning of it, and engage with it on a daily basis in at least one language. We should also consider the importance of being media literate, the ability to interpret symbols, and the capacity to transfer knowledge. For our purposes, we will focus on the six strands of literacy, including reading, writing, speaking, listening, viewing, and visually representing. These are all ways in which we create meaning from the texts and events we are exposed to and how we communicate our thoughts to those around us. We should also bear in mind that some of us may rely more heavily on different strands depending on our culture, upbringing, and cognitive capacity. Let's discuss the benefits of incorporating multiple literacies into your classroom. Nipper and Dugan state that understanding subject matter involves more than doing or knowing something. Mastery of content is demonstrated not only through reading, but also through writing. Appealing to more than one literacy strand can help us increase student engagement, leading to deeper understanding of your subject matter in any area of the curriculum. Emphasizing multiple literacies allows students to connect with what they are learning and promotes diversity within the classroom. When students have the chance to discuss their thoughts, feelings, and background regarding the subject matter, it allows them to better understand themselves and each other. The different perspectives are important to learning and promoting cultural awareness and acceptance. Allowing students to be assessed according to their literacy abilities will provide students a means to communicate their understanding of the subject area, especially if reading and writing are more challenging for them or if the student is an English language learner. This differentiation also gives you a better understanding of what your students know and what they may need more help with. In a more broad view, fostering literacy in our students across all subject areas sets students up for success in society. Smith reminds us that to help students become genuine readers, teachers must provide opportunities for students to experience both informational and recreational aspects of reading. By promoting literacy across all subjects, we are fighting against illiteracy and a-literacy in our graduates and giving our students the skills they need to contribute to the workforce and the world around them. We will now discuss some strategies for integrating literacy into various subject areas. The good news is you are likely already incorporating several strands of literacy into your classroom. By doing this mindfully, you can ensure that you are using different strands and appealing to more students than you would by sticking to one strand. Consider the following strategies and keep in mind that the ideas are limitless. Incorporate picture books that complement your subject matter. Patricia Murphy explores the idea of using picture books in middle school. She states that picture books can help by entertaining, informing, and leading students to greater understanding of the world around them. And picture books can pique the interest of many adolescent students who, on the surface, may appear bored or apathetic. She also explains that picture books are helpful in older grades for struggling readers, which we could also extend to English language learners. By giving these students short, content-rich texts that can be read in class time, with accompanying pictures to aid with comprehension, we are fostering learning and allowing these students to have success with reading. This is also a great way to emphasize technical vocabulary that may not be gleaned from a dense textbook. For example, try introducing your next science topic with a picture book. 
Help solidify your students' perspective on numbers or volumes in mathematics through a story. Read a story about a family of the culture you are studying in social studies. Or provide some context to a physics lesson with a news article about the concept in question. Try taking your projects to the next level. Rather than simply assigning a research paper or some practice questions, why not use the opportunity to connect the learning across subject areas and encourage literacy? Try assigning a project using the stages set forth by Tompkins. Pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. This process allows students to have more time to contemplate and absorb the subject matter and makes the assignment meaningful. It also allows you to formatively assess your students as they complete the project so that you have the chance to guide students who would not have otherwise submitted an acceptable assignment. The editing stage allows students to learn from one another, challenge themselves, and broaden their knowledge. Encourage students to publish their projects with a visual representation incorporating the desired fine arts objectives. This could be a diorama, poster, painting, sculpture, video, etc. This last stage adds ownership to the project and the visual representations are an excellent way to commit learning to long-term memory. Students can present their projects to the class or in small groups to build students' confidence, practice oral skills, and to allow students with limited writing ability to complete the desired outcomes. Encourage creative writing or storytelling. Have the students create and share identity texts where they describe where they're from or what makes them unique. Social studies involves developing an understanding of the history and traditions of various civilizations, including Canadian and Indigenous cultures. As part of this process, students can explore their own identities and appreciate those of their classmates. This process is especially beneficial to English language learners and newcomers to Canada, as Cummins et al. explain. English language learners will engage academically to the extent that instruction affirms their identities and enables them to invest their identities in learning. Identity texts can take many forms, including poem, blog, story, song, letter, etc. This allows students to be creative and participate in a way that makes them feel comfortable and capable. Another strategy would be for students to write creatively about the subject being studied. By writing a poem or story about an animal or even a weather pattern in science, the students can have fun while reinforcing the concepts learned in class. In social studies, the students could write a play, short story, or fictional identity text from the perspective of inhabitants of the time frame and country in question. Let's review. Literacy means more than simply reading and writing. The additional strands of literacy, including speaking, listening, viewing, and visually representing, should also be included in instruction across the entire curriculum. By encouraging literacy in all its forms, teachers are engaging students to create meaning from the concepts for deeper understanding while promoting diversity in the classroom. Using various strands of literacy to differentiate assessments allows students to show exactly what they know to the teacher and helps the teacher verify which concepts have been effectively taught. Each strand of literacy is integral to our students' success in the future, so we should do our best to provide a strong foundation of literacy in school. We can incorporate literacy into any subject area. Teachers can use picture books far beyond elementary school to introduce concepts and stimulate those students who have trouble connecting with the curriculum. We can take our projects to the next level by using the writing process to create published works rather than sticking to worksheets and essays. Creative writing can be used to solidify understanding of the subject and even to link it to other parts of the curriculum. I hope this presentation has encouraged you to integrate multiple literacies into your classroom. I challenge you to come up with your own ideas to help you put this into practice. How can you adapt any of your planned assignments to include some of the ideas discussed today? And what other ways could literacy be fostered in your classroom? Remember, all teachers are responsible for cultivating literacy in our students.